When names of Nigerian leaders who have played a prominent role in nation building are mentioned, the name Ernest Adegunle Oladende Shonekon will be one of those added to the roll call. In his lifetime, not only did Shonekon stand tall in the private sector, where he rose to the position of the chairman and chief executive officer of United African Company, a vast Nigerian conglomerate, which was once the largest African-controlled company on the continent. He briefly held sway as Nigeria's interim head of state. However, his time in office occurred at a time of political instability in the country, following the cancellation of the June 12, 1993 presidential election, won by the late chief MKO Abiola. Owing to that political crisis that ensued after the annulment of the election, Shonekon's tenure was declared illegitimate by Abiola, who wanted to reclaim his mandate. He was also hamstrung by a national worker strike and a weak government that had been placed under the control of the military by his predecessor in office, General Ibrahim Babangida. Despite the challenges, Shonekon, in his few months in power, tried to schedule another presidential election and return to democratic rule. He also released political prisoners detained by Babangida and introduced a bill to repeal three major draconian decrees of the military government. However, two months into his administration, Shonekon was overthrown in a palace coup by General Sani Abacha. Outside office, Shonekon went on to feature prominently as an elder statesman, but sadly passed away yesterday at the age of 85. Now joining us to lend more insight into his life and accomplishments is Chief Olusegun Oshaba, former governor of Ogun State and a personal friend of the late Ernest Shonekon. Good morning, Chief Oshaba, and thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you, Tudu. How are you? Very well, thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us. Well, well same to you, Abati. Yes, sir. Well, very quickly, uh, Chief uh, Shunekon, uh, who passed on uh, yesterday, uh, what kind of man was he, and how will you define his place in history? Uh, a very humble person, a gentleman to the core, uh, and uh, a man with good pedigree and a good uh, family man. To a large extent, uh, we had a very strong relationship because uh, my uncle, uh, Chief, late Chief Albert Oshoba, was, was very close to the father, and he had a lot of influence on the bringing up of uh, Chief Ernest uh, Shoneko. Um, he made his mark in the corporate world, particularly in the multinational world, where he rose to be the chairman and chief executive of uh, the giant uh, USC. And uh, he created his own uh, brand by changing the USC uh, brand in, into serious estate uh, development uh, company with so many giant projects uh, in Ikoyi and over, all over Nigeria where USC had uh, properties in the government reservation area. Uh, his place uh, in history is, uh, is very clear. And um, I must say that uh, it's uh, a painful loss to those of us who are close to him. Thank you, sir. He, did, he does leave behind a truly lovely family. Um, but I want to draw your attention to your memoirs, Battle Lines, Adventures in Journalism and Politics, in which you go into great detail about the circumstances surrounding the formation of the interim government. I'm not going to sit here and feign neutrality, of course, but I'd like you to shed more light on how that came about. Uh, I didn't get your last bit of uh, question. The, I was just asking you to shed cracking. some light on Can the. Repeat? Sorry, sir. I was just asking you to shed some light on the formation of the interim government, which you detailed in your memoirs, Battle Lines, Adventures in Journalism and Politics. Well, the formation of the interim government actually uh, uh, happened because uh, there were about for us um, pressure on Chief Ernest Shuneko. I recall that um, uh, Dame Lady, uh, Linda Choka, 
the British government was involved in the high power politics that uh, followed the June 12th thing, and they, they were one of those who mounted every pressure on a national call to accept to be the head of the interim government. Uh, that created a very big family row and a high political tension between us, the contending forces uh, on the side of MQ Abela and uh, on his own side. Uh, but I must say that both sides, uh, as I described to you, Femme Kuyabela in my book, a very large-hearted uh, person. To our shock, Chief M. Kuyabola still allowed his son to be the uh, best man to Chief Shunekon's son at the height of the political tension that was going on then. And on the side of Chief Shunekon, he remained a gentleman in spite of the tension between, between two sides, between two uh, very close families. I was uh, on the side of uh, Chief M.Q. Abela, and the Egbert Traditional Council became divided over the issue. Uh, over time, uh, all throughout this period, while the British, British, British government was putting pressure on Chief M.Q. Abela to remain in London, in order to allow Chief Shunoko interim government to continue, they were mounting pressure on Chief Shunoko himself to accept to or take on the job of the interim um, government. Uh, it, it was a tension-soaked period at that time. Mm. And that was a moment in our history. Uh, just to go back to that uh, moment in our history, do, do you think that the interim government was dead on arrival, even at its formation, because a lot of people said it was just a stopgap for the, as it was, he was then called then, the Khalifa, which I, I think translate loosely to the king in waiting, General Sonia Bacha, to come take over. So what, what, do you think it was dead on arrival? Could you explain that area to us? The interim government was a, a, a terrible sh setup. Uh, uh, Bacha had always been ambitious to be president. Even before Babangida left, he, he had wanted to succeed uh, Babangida. Uh, Abacha, on the other hand, got involved in um, putting pressure on Chief MQ Abela to return to Nigeria so that his return could create greater tension uh, for, for him to get rid of um, Chief Shunekon in office, because Chief Abiola was then in London. While the Ndachoka was putting pressure on Chief Abiola and the British government were asking him to remain in London to create an enabling atmosphere for Chief Shunekon, uh, Abacha himself was putting pressure on those of us who are close to Abiola to get Abiola to return. And he kept assuring Abiola that uh, he would do, he was on the side of uh, Abiola. A, a lot of deceit uh, happened at that time. Uh, all towards uh, Abacha emergence. Abacha was desperate to become uh, president. He, 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 somehow, he gave the impression as if he had an arrangement. We, the governors of, uh, I led some governors to meet Abacha uh, uh, at that time, because we were still working on the uh, idea that uh, the June 12th should be restored. He deceived us. We met him, we met the uh, I, I, we didn't know that uh, they were already on the way to uh, upstaging Chief uh, Shuneko. Uh, he assured us that he would arrange a meeting between us and what he called his boys, only for us to find out that the following week we were all kicked out of office. Abacha had always had his own agenda, unknown to many of us, unknown to me, unknown to Chief M. Kibola, who. Uh, Chief M. K. Bella was too trusting, uh, I should say. He trusted in many of these people, and um, it was to change. Well, sir, some people have said that uh, the uh, interim national government was a unifying force at uh, a time of great uncertainty, and that Chief Shunekon uh, was at the forefront of that. But can we really say that the uh, interim national government, which lasted for just about 93 days, have to unify the country when, in fact, 
the uh, emergence of the ING was itself a catalyst for further division in the country. What do you think? Well, as I said earlier, uh, the, the situation was high power conspiracy theory uh, on the side of uh, particularly Abacha, who at that time, uh, one, determined to upstage to get uh, Babangida out of office. Two, his agenda was to succeed uh, Babangida, which he had always had, even when Babangida was in power. Um, uh, it all rested on Abacha and his uh, uh, determination to uh, uh, take over uh, the reins of government in Nigeria. Tishunako was just, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, a person innocently be used, uh, particularly by Pacha, who eventually uh, 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 went in to, to advise Shuneko uh, uh, almost at the gunpoint to ask him to sign a, a resignation uh, letter. So it, it, it was all cons uh, high, high powered. Uh, 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 coup, palace coup first to get rid of Babangida and a second palace coup to get rid of uh, Chuneko. A third one, a deceit of Chief M. Kuyabela, all geared towards um, uh, Abacha uh, 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 becoming uh, head of state. In fact, when they got to, uh, after getting uh, Chief Chuneko to resign, uh, they did. Uh, among themselves, they played themselves out when it became the issue of who should be the head of state. That was, I, I remember it was not for Abacha originally. Uh, I, I was told that uh, one of the officers just said, well, we use seniority, knowing that Abacha being uh, 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 chief of defense staff at that time, who automatically now become the head of state. Well, all I see is just a link in the long chain of causation that resulted in my father's death. So I just want to segue away from that and talk about Chief Shonekon's years as an elder statesman. Can you just detail some of his contributions to national development? Well, his contribution was more in the economic sector. You know, even after leaving office, after he was kicked out, uh, he still believed in the economic development of Nigeria. And uh, the group of people that he was able to muster together from in the private sector to help the economy of the country. Uh, I think he, 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 that, that is more of a success on his side than any other thing because he did his best to revamp the economy of the country by getting out the private sector self-funded, not by the government, to still see how we can rescue the economy of the country. It's, it's, as you said, it's most unfortunate that Tifem uh, Kuyabela uh, paid the price of his own innocence, of his own determination to uh, make Nigeria better. So, as a personal friend to him, another thing Chief Shoneko enjoyed was the fact that he was on the Council of State for all this while, for so many years. And I'm sure he had conversations. He enunciated some views as regards, you know, the economy of this nation up till yesterday when he passed. He was still on that Council of State. Uh, did you talk to him about some of the views, you know, he shared out there on the Council of State or the advice he gave? And what were the things that bothered him? What kept him up awake in the night about Nigeria? We were both in the Council of State because as governor, we are all members of the Council of State. And I know his uh, uh, hope and interest was uh, in the economy of the country. And he, he used his experience in the private sector at all times to ad advise on the way forward. Uh, his advice, in most, mo most times, probably were not taken seriously. <clears throat> but uh, he, he, he did his best 
uh, in terms of the economic development um, of this country. And uh, in my relationship with him, um, like MK Abela, uh, MK Abela doesn't keep prejudices. He too doesn't keep prejudices. And uh, we remain very close. Uh, you people refer to him as Olati. He, 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 he was born known as a, a Degula to all of us. Um, I can tell you that um, even after all the political tension, when I became governor again in 1999, he was one of the first with the wife to visit me in my private house after I became governor. We remain close. In any ceremony that I'm involved in, when I launched my book, even with a very short notice, he was there. Uh, in everything I was involved in, we remain uh, close and um, we all try to put behind us all the uh, divisive issues and tension that uh, were created between all the families, my, myself, MK Abella, and himself. We, we try to, and the children remain, uh, I must say that the MK Abella children remain very close to his children and they maintain the relationship till today. Yes, sir. Earlier on, you referred to the Egba Traditional Council and how the politics of uh, 1993, the interim national uh, uh, government affected relationship within that council. Yes, matters may have been resolved at the uh, family levels. Uh, and at that time, there were very prominent Egba sons uh, play a major role. We had Chief M. K. Abiola, Chief uh, N. S. Shunekong, we had Chief Olushegun Obasanjo, we had uh, uh, your good self. Well, even if this has been resolved at the family level uh, in terms of personal relationships, has it affected politics within Egbaland itself, considering that you all come from different sections? It, it did, because um, a meeting was called at that time. And um, uh, Chief Simon Adebo was the only one who stood firmly against some curious theory that was pro propounded by the Agua Traditional Council. Uh, uh, in Yoruba time, the, 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 what they came out with that was that in Kainiok, in Dimeji, Kabinu, that uh, uh, they now have double score. In, in, in terms of both MK Abella and uh, and National Con, and came with a resolution to say that uh, uh, we should all try to tolerate the, 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 the situation on hand. I was governor. I had to go on air immediately, con and I condemned the conclusion of the traditional council, where only uh, Chief uh, Adebo was the one that was strongly opposed to any idea of saying that uh, we now have a uh, double score in uh, both uh, Chief M. K. Abella and uh, Chief uh, Shuneko. And I went on here immediately to condemn the whole thing that uh, uh, the Auguste government was not comfortable with the Agba traditional council. But uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was a highly dis divisive situation at that time. But as I said, the attitude of, the two, of the, all the families to put together help, particularly the M.K. Abella family and Shonako family, who, uh, in spite of all that was happening, uh, managed the situation and uh, uh, continued to create a, a, a very strong relationship between the two families. And therefore, all of us had to uh, take everything in, in, in uh, we, we took everything in the stride. Yes, sir, we certainly did that. What would you say is the legacy of Chief Ernest Shoneko? His legacy is more in the economic sector. Uh, as I said, today there are, the skies, there are many skyscrapers uh, developed by him as chairman of USC. You know, the USC is uh, uh, the baby of Royal Niger Company a company that uh, the British government gave seeded Nigeria to. And so they, they, they virtually own uh, and developed then the best area in Nigeria, the Ikoyi in Lagos, and so many GRA government reservation areas throughout the country where the USC was uh, the biggest 
and the Royal Niger Company uh, was the was the virtually the the the, the uh, administrator of uh, the, the I will call it Southern Territory. Later, there was no Nigeria then. Uh, after the amalgamation, the UAC was still in control. The legacy that I would say Trinacol left is that he moved the UAC company out of trading into uh, uh, estate uh, company. And that uh, the, the estates uh, are high assets to UAC. And I'm sure UAC is still uh, making money from those uh, assets that the uh, Trinacol started and uh, developed at that time. Like they say, really in terms of Nigeria. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Finish up, sir. He did it. He, and in terms of Nigeria, he did his best to uh, to give uh, correct, reasonable uh, suggestions to manage the economy of this uh, country. Okay. Uh, so, like I was saying, I said, like they say, real estate is the real estate. Uh, I would like to know your thoughts about the declaration of uh, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu. What's your take on this? For presidency. Oh, uh, Chief Bola Tinubu has a right and, um, and is qualified as long as you are a Nigerian and you are above 18. You have the right and qualified the, to contest any office in this country. Uh, he has exercised his right. And then the following day, you can see that uh, the governor of a boy exercised his own right. Uh, I think the year 2022 will be very, very, very interesting year in the politics of this uh, country. Well, sir, uh, just before uh, we round up, earlier this morning, we had Chief Olabode George, uh, the uh, PDP uh, chief chain on this program. And we posed this same question to him. He didn't sound like uh, he's impressed by uh, uh, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Chinubu, and he thinks that uh, his uh, interest in the presidency uh, is something that uh, nobody should take seriously, even if he has the right to declare his, his interest. You know, Olabode George uh, is my junior. We grew up together. Uh, even when his father died, I was one of our. I was one of the top people at the father's burial. Allah Bode George has a, has, is bitter against Bola. He believed that Bola Tinubu had a hand in his uh, uh, problem. Uh, he is in PDP. Uh, he, he, should, he has a right to make his own comment, but uh, at the same time, we, we are APC, he's PDP. Let, let him go and manage the PDP and uh, drop their own candidates. And as many candidates as possible to also come out in PDP. But I know he's very bitter and uh, he, he displays all that bitterness. He has had occasion to attack me unfairly. But uh, as usual, uh, I, I take body job for what he is. Well, on that note, we'd like to thank you very much, Chief uh, Oshoba, for joining us on the morning show today.